The Passion of the Christ is a 2004 American film depicting the last 12 hours of Jesus Christ before he was crucified on the cross by the Romans. The film itself was directed by Mel Gibson who also co-wrote the film and it stars Jim Cavell, I can't say his name properly so I do apologise if I said your name wrong, but he plays the titular Jesus Christ. Now when the film was released it predominantly was positive reviews but it did have some criticisms. So what could have made the film better? Well that's what we're going to talk about today and while we discuss 10 things that could have made The Passion of the Christ better. Right, before I get started, just want to let you know, because we are discussing the film in its entirety, there are going to be spoilers about the film, so if you haven't watched it, I may spoil it for you. Also, while you're here, please don't forget to look for one of these buttons, the subscribe button, the like button, and also the share button, get the word out there as well. Um, but I also want to give a shout out to someone else, Sinister RP, the person behind the web series Dark World, which is playing on my computer behind me, who I'm also one of the voice actors for. Episode 2 is now out and there is actually going to be a link up here to the actual episode, so go and check that out. Lastly, I just want to put it out there that I'm not here to criticise uh, or anybody's religion or faith, I'm only here to review the film. That's it, nothing else. But other than that, as I said, spoilers, so let's get cracking on what could have made the film better. Number 10. Have the film talk in English. Yeah, the film itself, it's in three languages. It's in Hebrew, Latin and Amharic. And it, because there's no English in it at all, it makes it hard to follow the film. Now, I understand why they did this, but I do think it put off a lot of a bigger audience on, about it. Uh, if they had it in English, it would have made it easier to understand and a lot more people could have enjoyed the film. Number nine. Have the film made with subtitles? As I said in point number 10, I sort of understand why they didn't actually have talking in English. It's to try and keep that sense of realism, to try and make you fully immersed in the film. And to some extent, it does work. The problem is, the film itself doesn't have subtitles, so you are left relying on whatever streaming platform you're left with. I personally watched it on Amazon Prime which only seem to have half the subtitles, especially from the Romans. A lot of the times the Romans were talking to each other, but there was no subtitles, so I didn't actually know what was being said. Same again, it's hard to actually follow the film if you don't know what's going on. Now in sci-fi films, when they have like an alien made up language, the film itself puts the subtitles in. And, but this film didn't, they just left it blank for some reason. So you're left with the service provider to add their own subtitles in and you're losing a lot of the film from it. Number eight, not have the night scenes so dark. At the beginning of the film is set in the Garden of Gethsemane, which obviously is where Jesus got arrested. And it was at night time. But the problem is they didn't really make it light. So yes, it is dark, like it's supposed to be, but you still want to see what the hell's going on, and you didn't get that. Just put a bit of lighting in it, brighten the film up about it, still give the impression that it's night time, and we can follow it. It's doubly annoying the fact that you have no idea what people are saying, and yeah, just these little things make the film a little bit more enjoyable. Number seven, less facial close-ups. Now, the people who are in this film acted their hearts off and did an absolute fantastic job with their acting abilities. So for some reason, Mel Gibson decided to put the camera right in their faces in a lot of the scenes. It didn't need that. Just pan out a little bit. I mean, would you watch this video if my face was here the whole way through the film? That is what a lot of the scenes were like in this film. Just pull the camera back. Come on, Mel Gibson, you're good. Actually, you're a really good director, but not one of your best moves, that. Number six, less graphic torture scene. Wow. When I mean gruesome, I'm not kidding. This torture scene was unbelievable. I mean, you actually, when they were whipping Jesus, you actually saw the whelps and cuts appear as each and every whip. But as the weapons got stronger, so was the gore. There was one thing, it was like a cat of nine tails. And as it whipped, it has razor blades on the end of it. And they were ripping chunks off the side of Jesus's bodies. Now, I know Mel Gibson was going for realism, but that was just OTT. It didn't need to be 
that gory. Especially with Jim's acting ability, you saw the pain. You could have actually just you left it to people's imaginations. Didn't need to show it, in, especially in that much detail. I mean, oh my God, that was just awful. Number five, less violence towards Jesus. So yeah, it wasn't just the violence in the to torture scene. I mean, the whole film is literally violence towards Jesus in this film. Lull in the story, let's give him a kick. Lull in the story, let's whip Jesus. That's literally primarily what this film is. It's two hours of Jesus being punched, kicked and whipped. It was, didn't need to be that much of it, especially as Jesus is a religious icon. The film, I get the impression it was just to pad the story out, just to make it that little bit longer, just to increase the runtime. But it didn't need to be, it didn't need to be that much violence. I mean, there was one scene where they threw Jesus off a bridge and left him hanging by chains. Just uh, too much violence in this, especially towards someone like that. Number four, less drawn out scenes. So apart from the added violence towards Jesus, the other thing this film did a hell of a lot was actually really draw out their scenes. Uh, there were some scenes where it was just lingering for no reason, longer than it necessary. There were some scenes that were just slowed down there was no actual need for it. It doesn't add to the emotion or the tension of the story. It's just there to pad the story out that little bit longer. There are other ways you can pad the story out in a lot better ways. And here's a couple of examples. Number three, start the film at the Last Supper. So as previously said, the film starts off in the Garden of Gethsemane. Why not start the film during the Last Supper? It's a chance for Jesus to say goodbye to his friends, his disciples, and it gives that story that little bit more meaning because he knew what was going to happen to him next. And instead, they started a little bit later on. Granted, they did actually put the Last Supper in flashbacks throughout the film, mainly at the end of the film, but it sort of lost its meaning. It would have meant more from the beginning of the film, knowing he knew he was going to die. Number two, show more of the resurrection. So the ending of this film is set in Jesus's tomb and you see Jesus's body all wrapped up and then it disappears, camera zooms out and there's Jesus crouched next to his body and then he stands up and walks away like a superhero. Great, so you see him come back to life, but what then? Couldn't we have had that little bit more afterwards just so you know he didn't go through all of that, all of that suffering for nothing. Just it adds that little bit more to the story. It even gives our story that little bit of a happier ending and also just explains a little bit more of what the hell or why the hell he actually went through everything he went through during this film. Number one, explain why Jesus died. So John 3.16 actually says, for God loved the world so much he gave his only son. That message, that saying, should have been the foremost reason to be at the beginning of this film, for the message of this film. Yet, there was no message in this film. It, well, if there was, I missed it. The impression that I got that this film was about was, priests didn't like Jesus, so they arranged for Romans to kill him. That's the impression that I got from this film. Now, I know that's not what the story is about, but it, that message didn't come across in this film something that important the whole reason of why jesus did what he did is missing from this film final thoughts surprisingly this is actually a really really good film um, mel gibson did a fantastic job directing this but a few little niggly bits and that's all these points are they're just little niggly bits about this film it was that good I mean the acting was phenomenal I'm not even gonna single a single actor or actress out every performer in this film outdid themselves it was brilliant it was moving and it, granted with it take out the language barrier you did get to feel for the characters just out of their pure acting abilities which is fantastic John Debney who scored the music for this film also was out of this world his score in this film captured the emotion of each character fantastically the locations was fantastic 
I know they were trying to go for that huge sense of realism and this film pulled that off perfectly. You did get a sense of this was filmed as it was happening, rather it's a rec recreation of something that happened 2000 years ago. It was that good. So when it comes to ranking the score, how many berries am I going to give it? Well, I'm going to give it eight berries. It was that good. I thoroughly enjoyed the film. Surprising enough, because I wasn't actually expecting to enjoy the film as much as I did. So I can't sing or shout these praises enough for this film. Bar those few niggly points, it was that close to actually getting a nine, maybe even a ten. But I think the violence issue just knocked it down that too much. Anyway, that was my thoughts of the film. What did you think? Have you seen it? Have, what did you think? Did you enjoy this film? This film is obviously because it's Easter, and look, I've got my Easter eggs here already and waiting. They're all mine to eat, <laughs> if I can get away with that one. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. I look forward to seeing you next week, and there's more videos on the screen now. So if you want to keep in touch, there's social networking up in my new Berry Telly. What do you think about the Berry Telly? Yes or no? But thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.